Hi, I'm John Kinzer, and this is Faith, Culture, and Society. Today we're looking at Series 4, Session 4, Patrick Henry, one of the great patriots in American history. And this is probably, we consider Patrick Henry the greatest speaker in American history. He's probably the greatest orator. He's been called the voice of the American Revolution. He spoke this famous phrase, give me liberty or give me death. He was commander in chief of the Virginia militia. He was a member of the Continental Congress. He was a member of the Virginia Assembly and he was instrumental in writing the Constitution of Virginia. He was five times elected governor of Virginia. He's the only man in history ever in the United States to be elected five times as governor. So that's a testimony to how well he served, how popular he was to uh, Americans. He was offered numerous positions by President George Washington and the Congress, but he declined all of them. He was offered Secretary of State, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, U.S. Minister to Spain, U.S. Minister to France, and yet he declined all of them. Prior to the War for Independence in 1768, Patrick Henry rode for miles on horseback to a trial in Spotsylvania County in Virginia. He entered the rear of the courtroom where three Baptist ministers were being tried for preaching without permission of the Episcopal Church. That was the Church of Virginia. In the midst of this proceeding, Patrick Henry got up and interrupted and said, may it please your lordships, what did I hear read? Did I hear an expression that these men whom your worships are about to try for a misdemeanor? are charged with preaching the gospel of the Son of God. He couldn't believe that these men were charged with breaking the law in preaching the gospel. Well, on March 23rd, 1775, he entered the church at St. Uh, John's Church in Richmond, and there was a mounting tension between England and the colonies. And here he de delivered probably his most famous address. Sir, we are not weak if we make proper use of the means which the God of nature has placed in our power. Three millions of people armed in the holy cause of liberty and in such a country that we possess are invincible by any force the enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we will not fight our battle alone. There is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations and who will raise up friends to fight our battle for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the vigilant, the active, the brave. Is life so dear or peace so sweet to be purchased at the price of slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry, greatest speaker in American history. He wrote on the back of an envelope after the Stamp Act happened in May of 1765, uh, a reason for the opposition to the Stamp Act. And he said this, written on the back of an envelope. This brought on the war, which finally separated the two countries and gave independence to America. Whether this will prove a blessing or a curse will depend upon the use our people make of the blessings which gracious God has bestowed on us. If they are wise, they will be great and happy. If they are of a, a, a contrary character, they will be miserable. Now notice how he talks about internal character. 
That's key if you have liberty. Look what he says next. Righteousness alone can exalt them as a nation. Reader, whoever thou art, remember this. And in thy sphere, practice virtue thyself and encourage it in others. Wow, powerful advice. My heart is full, he said in a letter to his sister. His sister had just lost her husband. Notice what he says. Henry writes, perhaps I will never see you again in this world. Heaven will, I trust, give you its choicest comfort and preserve your family. Such is the prayer of him who thinks it's his honor and pride to be your affectionate brother, Patrick Henry. Henry's religious beliefs formed his political beliefs. His strong faith in God gave him respect for the natural rights of men. For he believed those rights are God-given. His fear of a concentrated, centralized government power was based on his Calvinist recognition in the sinful nature of man. He declared his opposition to the Constitution at a Virginia convention. And he said this, Where are the checks in this government? Your strongholds will be in the hands of your enemies. It is on a supposition that your American governors will always be honest, that all the good qualities of this government are founded. But its defective and imperfect construction puts it in their power to perpetuate the worst of mischiefs, should they be bad men. And sir, would not all the world from the eastern to the western hemisphere blame our distracted folly in resting our rights on the contingency of our rulers being good or bad? So Henry opposed the Constitution. He thought the government could become too strong and it would hurt the rights of the people. On his deathbed, he was 63 years old. Dr. Uh, Cabell was there administering medicine to him that might kill him. This is what happened. As he lay on that bed, among other things, he told them that he was thankful for the goodness of God that had blessed him all his life and then permitted him to die without any pain. Finally, fixed with his eyes on, with tenderness on his doctor, he said, uh, and he, he had held many arguments respecting the Christian religion with Dr. Cabell. He asked the doctor this, to observe how great a reality and benefit that Christianity was to a man who was about to die. And after Patrick Henry had spoken to his beloved physician, those few words in praise of something which never had failed him all his life before, did not then fail him in his last moment of life, he continued to breathe very softly for some moments, after which they who were looking upon him saw that his life had departed. Henry's last will, his will and testament, penned in his own hand, contained one final word of faith. He said, this is all the inheritance I can give to my dear family. The religion of Christ can give them one which will make them rich indeed. What is the lesson that we can draw from this great patriot, this dedicated Christian who was so careful not to endanger freedoms with a government that could be too strong and dominant? Well, I believe he was inspired by the belief that we all have received from God and that God is the author of liberty. Our freedoms as human beings belong to God, and he has given them to us to protect us and for us to uh, cherish. He was convinced, Henry was convinced, that God had given us self-government and self-control and letting God direct, control, regulate, and restrain our lives, submitting to God's word. The Bible was the basis of freedom. Henry returned to these truths, 
held them dear and protected them with diligence and vigor. Thanks for joining me today for Faith, Culture, and Society.